In this video, I'm going to show you how to create professional looking mockups for your print on demand designs. And we're going to use a combination of free AI tools and Photoshop to generate truly high quality results. So, just to cover the basics, what exactly are mockups? Now, mockups are essentially images used to showcase products or designs in a realistic setting. They're most often used for graphic designs like posters, mugs, or t shirts, and they help present your work in a professional, eye catching way. Think of them as a marketing tool. They let your customers visualize how your product would actually look like in their home or as part of their daily life. So they're super effective at telling a story and showing the true value of your designs. So this is a two-step process. First, we need to get the actual mockup images and we're going to use ChatGPT5 to help us create them. And then we're going to properly transform those images into actual mockups. Now, what do I mean by this? That a proper mockup is not just a plain image, but rather a working file that allows you to easily swap the design being showcased. This way, you can use the same mockup to display multiple designs without having to do a ton of fitting and resizing work each time. So there's multiple ways to get the base image. You can of course take a picture yourself, but in this day and age, it's much faster to get the image from ChatGPT, NanoBanana, or MidJourney. Now, since I want to do this for free, I'm going to go with ChatGPT and NanoBanana and compare the results. So I'm going to ask them both to create a t-shirt mock-up featuring a beautiful girl wearing a white shirt and blue jeans with cinematic lighting. And also, I'm going to specify that this mock-up is going to be used to sell t-shirts on an online marketplace. So it should be clear and attractive. We hit enter and let's see what these two AIs can do for us. Okay, so Nana Banana finished in just a few seconds and the results are definitely okay. I mean, she looks good and the lighting is okay. You could definitely use this as a mock-up. However, upon closer inspection, there is a subtle artificial feel to this image. I can't really tell exactly what it is. Her clothes look a bit fake and her skin is maybe too perfect. I mean, the point is that I can tell this is AI. So let's see what ChatGPT came up with. This took a couple minutes, but to be completely honest, the girl in this picture looks looks way more realistic. I also like her pose a bit better, so I think I'm gonna go with this one actually. The only thing is that I would like to change the background. After all, this is a lifestyle mockup, so we want this picture to look casual. So I'm going to ask it to generate a cool coffee shop background to make it a bit more interesting. Okay, there we go. This looks really good. If we zoom in, we can tell she looks pretty real. Her face and skin look very realistic and the texture of her clothes are exactly what we want. So this is just perfect. Now, step number two is to convert this image into an actual mockup file. So open the image in Photoshop and the first thing you want to do is create a rectangle on top of your image. This is going to be our placeholder, meaning where your design is actually going to be placed. So make sure the proportions and the position are just perfect. Next, you want to fill this rectangle with a black and white gradient. To do that, go to your right hand menu and on the top select the gradients tab and within the basics apply a black and white gradient. Okay, so now that the placeholder is in place, the next step is to convert it into a smart object. This is crucial to later be able to to easily swap the designs being displayed in this mockup. So right click on the layer and select convert to smart object. That's it. Next, we want this placeholder to replicate the bumps and dumps in the t-shirt. As you can see, if we lower the opacity, the t-shirt underneath has a series of folds, peaks and valleys that give it volume and depth. And of course, since our design is going to be printed on the shirt, we want it to replicate the movement of the fabric. So to do that, we first need to create a displacement map. So we select the background layer, we right click on it and choose duplicate layer. Now where it says document, we open the drop down menu and choose new. Now let's name it displacement. This will effectively create a new file, so here it is. Now, first, we want to take away the colors by pressing Command plus Shift plus U. Now we're going to create a bump map with this black and white image. Now, in case you don't know what that is, a bump map basically tells a texture or image how to mold itself to the underlying surface. In this case, it will tell the design where the peaks and valleys of the shirt are. Now, if we zoom in, we can see that the shirt actually has some texture to it, which we don't really want want, because we want our design to simply mold itself to the actual folds in the shirt. So to get rid of some of that detail, we're going to go into Filter, Blur, and select Gaussian Blur. And here we can choose a radius of, let's say, 3, which will get rid of the right amount of texture without really affecting the folds. Now this may vary by image, so choose your radius based on what actually looks good on your specific mockup. Okay, so now we need to simply save this new file as a PSD. So let's click Shift plus Command plus S and save it as Displacement. That's it. Now we simply go back to our mockup document, we select the placeholder right here, go to filter, distort, and select displace. Now this number basically decides how much bump there's going to be. You can of course experiment with this, but for me something like 15 is the ideal middle ground in most cases. Keep the rest of the settings as they are, we hit OK, and we'll be prompted to choose a bump map, which is the black and white image we just created. So we select it and click O 
open. Now take a look at that. The rectangle has adapted to the underlying folds of the shirt. This is particularly visible here at the bottom, but it's also noticeable here. So this will bring much more realism to your design when you apply it to the shirt. Okay, so now we have a base to work with. The next step is to properly blend this placeholder into the t-shirt by making sure the highlights and shadows match those of the fabric. So the first step is to change the blending mode of the placeholder to multiply. Now already this is looking much better. We can now see some of the shirt underneath and as you can see the brighter colors blend perfectly. However, we can't really see the shirt under the darker tones. So to fix that, we're going to double click on the placeholder layer and in this pop-up window, make sure you are in the blending options. Go to the bottom into the underlying layer slider, choose the one on the right and hold down the option key on your keyboard. Now click on the slider to break it apart and bring the left half to the left. Now take a look at that. Now the darker tones blend with the underlying t-shirt much better. So try to find a nice balance where you can see the shirt but you don't lose too much contrast. And there we go, that looks great. <laughs> so we click OK. Now as you can see the placeholder blends alright but it's too transparent. So to fix that we first need to duplicate the layer. Now we double click on the new layer, we reset the underlying layer slider and this time we do it from the other side. So again we hold the option key, break apart the slider and bring the right half all the way to the right. We click OK and there we go. As you can see we have recovered the full texture of the placeholder and it still blends in perfectly. Now there is one final step and that is to take care of the highlights. So simply duplicate this layer and change the blending mode to screen. Now turn off all the layers except the background, select the background layer and go into channels. Hold the command key on your keyboard and click on the RGB thumbnail. This will make a selection based on luminosity values. In other words, it will select the brighter areas more and the darker areas less, which is exactly what we want. So now with this selection active, turn every layer on again, select the top layer and click on mask. Okay, that is perfect. What this does is basically increase the highlights to make our design pop up when applied to the shirt. Now with this, our mockup file is ready. Now let me show you how to package it nicely to make it super easy to use. So simply duplicate the bottom layer, name it something like your design goes here and bring it all the way to the top. Now right click on it and choose clear layer style. Next, decrease the fill to zero and there we go. The layer should be invisible. Now to make this even cleaner, select the three adjustments you've made before and press Command plus G. This will group them all together for a super clean file and you can just name the group adjustments. Now let me show you how to use this mockup to easily display your designs. So you simply click on the icon of your design goes here layer and this will open the placeholder on a different file. Then all you need to do is simply drag and drop your design into this file. Place it precisely where you want it and now simply save it. Now if you go back to your mockup, check this out. The design is automatically placed in the mockup with all the adjustments we made before. This means that we can import all sorts of different designs into this file and they will be automatically placed and adjusted perfectly to the shirt. You don't ever need to do the adjustments again. All all you need to do is simply replace your designs and you are set. So there we go, what do you guys think? Now the good news is that t-shirt mockups are by far the most complicated because of all the steps you need to follow. However, if you wanted to create a mockup for your wall art shop or your map business, the process is much easier and straightforward. Let me just quickly show you. So once again, I created this image with ChatGPT and I'm gonna use it to display one of my map designs. So this time, all you need to do is simply create a rectangle same as before. Next, adapt the placeholder to the picture frame, making sure it fits perfectly. Now let's go ahead and transform it into a smart object object, we're going to simply change the blending mode to multiply and that's pretty much it. Now again, we double click on the smart object, it's going to open as a separate file and now we can simply drag and drop our poster into this file. Now we save it and if we go back to the mockup, it will be automatically updated with our poster, which will blend and fit perfectly into the frame. As you can see, the process of creating mockups for posters is much easier because you don't have to deal with all the peaks and valleys of t-shirts. It's just a flat surface with even lighting. And in the case of mugs, for example, the only difference is that after after creating the placeholder smart object, you just need to right click on it, select free transform and then right click on it again and choose warp. This will help you shape the placeholder like a cylinder. So simply click on the bottom middle section of the grid and drag it slightly down. Do the same for the top mid section and there you go. Your placeholder is now emulating the curvature of the mug. Same as usual, we double click on the smart object placeholder, we drag and drop our design into it, save it and when we go back to the mockup, there it is. Now these are all the tools you need to create all kinds of professional mockups. This way you can build a quality brand from the very beginning and display your designs with 100% custom and exclusive mockups. If you have any questions, please leave your comments down below. As always, I'll be more than happy to respond to every single one of you guys. Please don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week.